feeling all right. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're just having a conversation. We're, we're welcoming you here today and thanking you for being here. Uh, it's, a, it's great to actually have you with us, and we hope that you want to continue on. Uh, yeah, definitely. Is this on? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's a great thing to... Uh, now, tell us a bit about yourself and what you've been up to. Okay. Um, well, I've been, uh, for about 14 years, I've worked with the deaf community. I'm from Northern California, the San Francisco Bay Area, if you're familiar with that. And for 10 years, I worked in Fremont at the California School for the Deaf. And um, I was everything. I was their bus aide, transportation aide, dorm counselor, uh, substitute teacher, job coach, interpreter, everything they needed. For 10 years and then for the past eight years I've been working with different agencies as a free light, freelance sign language interpreter. Um, it's interesting that I met Richard. I, I'm also the sign language interpreter at Angela's Temple for the Dream Center, which is the church that I go to, and that's uh, my home church. But I am also starting my own ministry, so I'm going through the, the, the paperwork and everything to do for the nonprofit. But that's a little bit of I do, what I do. I have a big heart for the deaf community. I always have. Um, I just remember once when I was praying, um, I was like, God, and I wasn't even really even a Christian then. I mean, I was an atheist for, uh, until five years ago. I'm oh, wow. sorry. <laughs> yeah. wow. But um, I actually yeah. just said, God, I want to be a voice for the voiceless. And that's kind of what got me into this. And then, you know, isn't that funny? Just isn't to, it? It's yeah. just the way it works. If you, you're going to read the Bible to be able to arm yourself with everything against it and it convicts you. <laughs> yeah, very, very true. Wow, that, uh, you know, that's not the first time I've heard that. That's a wonderful testimony. I love it. That's my aunt. My aunt's testimony as well. She, uh, same thing. So, uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Continue on. That's great. So, yeah, it's just uh, me and Richard were talking on the phone actually the other day about how God has a sense of humor. And careful what you wish for because God just might give it to you. <laughs> He's very sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, he is. has some sarcasm as in the end of Job. Yeah. When he, uh, he scolds Job, he says, were you there when I built this place? Yeah. You know, he yeah. really has a sense of uh, he has a sense of sarcasm and he brings it on in a few places of the Bible. So our God loves us and you know he's a smart guy. He, uh, obviously he's he's the one with all the wisdom, not me. So yeah. Yeah. who do you think Don Ripple's got his uh, sarcastic abilities from? I don't know who that is. Don Rickles is an old sarcastic comedian from oh, okay. years and years ago, probably before your time, and I chose my age. <laughs> but he was very sarcastic and funny. And, uh, we were, I was just reading about, uh, we were having a study about the sarcasm that there is in the Bible. And, and, you know, thank God for sarcasm because it is a way for us to fight back against the evil forces that there are here. It's true. God uses humor. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, he's so multifaceted. Yes, he's God. He's authoritative. He's holy. But there are times when we're just so beaten up that I think he throws out a little bit of humor just because we need it at those moments. You oh, know, we Lord. need humor. And that's why I think the Bible says that, you know, a joyful heart do a feel like a medicine. But if, if God can get, keep us laughing and put people in our life that just kind of like convict us the way we need to hear it and you can laugh at yourself at the end of the day um yeah, that's where healing comes you know he puts the right people and you said the magic words he does put the people into our path when we're yep. at our brokenness at our worst yes, he and does. as he as he did for me he, he used a uh, situation with my aunt he, he raised up a uh, real hard traumatic traumatic point where my aunt where she all of a sudden called the family and for years she had been praying for me and uh, for all of us unsaved and kind of keeping to herself you know because of her husband her husband having like a post-traumatic stress syndrome from being in uh, Vietnam and that kind of thing and all of a sudden and finally it flowered and she had to come forward bring us to the house to help her and this whole thing went down, and next thing I know, she's asking me to go to church with her, and I was torn up. My, my story is like on the view meter as far as, from, eh, you know, it's nice. The people, those Christians are sweet, and they got good food usually, you know, so to the other side where it's horrible. So I'm over here pinged on the, uh, the right-hand side as far as... Uh, my testimony and what I've seen, how I've been re-enlightened because 
I, I was a business owner and homeowner, and uh, I lost both in 09. And I was driving on the street and had to find a place to live, and here I am, rebuilt. Still without a career, but you know, going along a path and letting music and the word direct my attention. So my focus is on kids, really heavily on children, and that's where Richard and I are in real alignment as far as uh, uh, the the outlook for something big and what we would like to do is public events and outreach with to reach children and eventually have a building facility and. At least to start with once a month, and not every weekend. We're hoping to get to that point where the doors open and the staff is there. Some staff there, and there are voluntary musicians that are coming forth and helping with the teaching. And we'll be Bible-based. It's not just to give kids music lessons, but the end result is to get them into Bible study. So yeah, you can participate. Anyway, thank you so much. Glad to hear it. Thank you.